Stopped. Restroom stop. Uh, I don't know where we're at. Maybe Tulare, babe. Or I didn't even pay attention. No, I don't know where we're at. So Sharon is um, her oldest son. If you guys know her, his eye. He's getting operated in the morning, so we're gonna go there for support to Los Angeles. Oh, Sharon, say hi, baby. Oh. Hey, guys. Yeah. So we um, <clears throat> stopped real quick. I wanted to clean my windshield and um, get get something to drink. I got a bag of beef jerky. Jose Solis, how you doing, brother? Good morning. Oh, you live? Yeah, Johnny Alcala. Brother, I'm heading to Los Angeles. I know you work, but we're going that direction. Double R, Teresita, OG Silver. Man, you guys are all on here. Leonard Perez, Stephanie Santiago. So we're on our way to Los were Angeles. They on, were they on, uh, were they on uh, service today? Hope you guys were in service. We're taking along with us Daniel and Naomi, the, right the newlyweds. You bought it? So we told them to come along. Um, so we're gonna be down there for a few days. Yeah, that was my name. Uh, in the San Fernando area. I just wanted to say hello to you guys. Hopefully you guys were had a chance to um, join us for Sunday service. Uh, man, worship did so good. You know, as you guys know, for years Sharon was up there pretty much singing by herself, leading by herself, and we got so many good people, beautiful voices you know that are coming alongside Sharon and, and kind of um, jumping in and, and, and leading worship and man and I and I know I don't know if some of you miss seeing Sharon sing every Sunday but to be honest with you I love having her next to me during worship and I love to hear my wife sing you know but it's nice for her to take a break and just be there and worship alongside of me so everybody's in yes so, um, yeah, we're heading to Southern California right now. You gonna put it on here? Yeah, I yeah. am. Hold on, guys. Sorry. Don't mean to give you guys. I'm gonna oh, put you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you first. Buckle up. So. Hi, guys. Johnny Alcala, are you still there, brother? Hello, everybody. Oh, Sheila's on there. Hello, everybody. Hello. Derek Mallory. Phyllis on there. Mike Wallace. Uh, Phyllis doesn't always come yeah. on. Adam. She thinks she comes on more, too. Right. She comes on. Emmanuel. Shout out to. Hola. Uh, Brother Johnny, uh, we're there till Tuesday morning, brother. I had to get <laughs> milk. You know why, guys? Look. I don't know. Where is that? <laughs> I ate I ate lemon heads and cherry heads, and I peeled my oh, tongue. Man. Hey, where's the stuff I bought? My tongue hurts. Yeah, where's that's really bad. Oh, there it is. Calm down, babe. No, I thought I left it in there. Calm down. How much is gas? Real expensive. Actually, I gassed up at Chevron in Modesto. I just parked here. So I can clean my windshield. They're probably laughing at me. Gas here is four dollars and fifty-two cents right here. The regular unleaded. So yeah. So guys, we are. Um, I want to read what they're saying. I'm gonna go on mine and. Yeah. Read. So Sharon's son is being operated. If you guys remember, he fell. He had a. Uh, he didn't fall. He had a seizure. Well, yeah, he had a seizure a few months ago. And something went into his eye. He hasn't been able to see out of it. He has healed a lot better than they thought. And to the point where they're actually going to go in and do some stuff that, that is promising. We're yeah. praying in the name of Jesus. He hasn't been able to see still from that eye, guys. And tomorrow is the day where they're going to, um, going to pretty much remove the globe clean. And actually... Um, they're going to actually put in a lens um, so you know how they have um, kidney transplants heart transplants well he's actually getting a new lens guys and that's a big deal so we're hoping um, ever since he ended up getting his his um, eye stitched back his whole globe stitched back 
they're hoping that once they put in a new lens and they go in and they clean it all up together they're trying to see if he's going to be able to once again be able to see um so tomorrow's the day so we're praying that you guys can all pray with us and um and that's it we know god's gonna god's gonna do a miracle you know because he wants to get back to a normal life and we know it's gonna take some time to heal but um you know just please keep us all in prayer so what are some of the people i saw adam say something about I'm, the, I'm about to go on there right about now. the newlyweds oh newlyweds let's see uh -huh. Brother adam. is that empty tombs productions yes yeah. out of boston Look at the happily married couple. That's right. God oh, is awesome. good. He that findeth a wife finds a good thing indeed. <laughs> she just did a you. I, know. Oh, I did. You sure did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Where are we? All right. Let me see. Who Gotta hit the turbos. All right. Let's see. Drive safe. Thanks so much. I don't like being behind. This truck has logs, and I saw that movie. Oh, yeah. Final Destination. Final no, Destination. Get, get away from there. Let I, me put my, be... I need to put my seatbelt on, guys. That, sh that belt should have been on in the first place. Or I am Larry. sorry. Oh, it's hilarious. Okay. Okay, guys. Yeah. Rocha. Roca means rock. That's right. <laughs> Roca. Amen. Yes, we're playing, we're playing for, for Ukraine. Unknown, unknown brother keeps seeking. He He's talking about somebody on there. He what will else? not leave you hanging. His ears towards those who are broken and contrite in spirit. Stay at his seat and we'll be praying. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Adam. Brother Thanks. Adam. Appreciate it, Adam. Amen. I see you. I see, I see you, brother. I see you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for always uh, jumping in and praying for those who come into the channel. You know what? A virtual usher and greeter. Oh. Yeah. Amen. He's always greeting everybody that comes in. Is he coming for that event? You guys are having the. Yeah, guys. We're thinking. We're thinking for the conference, guys. Um, I know we keep saying it, but we pushed it from August toward either end of September, October, to give you guys enough time to plan it out when we have a three-day conference, uh, relevant Bible talk conference at the church. Yeah, amen. You know, I did hear about um, about Night Owl, you know, and I pray for his family, and I pray for his loved ones and, and his family. We will definitely keep them in prayer. Amen. I'm not reading them, so you gotta tell me what people are saying. Uh, somebody had asked if we oh, could okay. continue. Yeah, we had, we had definitely, we had already heard that uh, before, and we have been in prayer for his family and his loved ones. Is Brother Johnny still on there? Yes. What was that? Yeah, Brother Johnny, I, I don't know how your work schedule is. You're probably busy, but. Am I lying? We're gonna. No, I said they'll be shining on the light. Just. Just lean to the side. Lean like a chola. And uh, we're, we're going to be there till Tuesday morning. And then we're going to actually drive go back. Like we're going to drive back up the coast. He's uh, on here. He said yes. Yeah, I've never been on Highway 1 ever all the way. The, you know, so we're just like, since we're down here, because last time we were going to do that. So we're like, oh, let's do it. Bring the newlywed. So, uh, but yeah, we're gonna, uh, tomorrow is, is Christopher's surgery in the morning. And um, we're praying in Jesus' name, everything's fine. It's a same day surgery, so he gets to go home, right? So we actually get to see him. Yeah, Jose says, um, what's crazy is that uh, TW also passed away the same day. Yeah. From COVID, from COVID. Both, both yeah, of them both passed of them. away both the same day. Yeah, we're, we, we knew that, Jose, and you know, our prayers go out to both of the families, you know? It's, it's never easy. I know that a lot of, um, we also, uh, back in Southern California, I know my daughter, my daughter's um, hubby's family as well. I think that same week as well, they had lost somebody um, that same week as well. 
you know there's just a lot of families that are, are losing loved ones and you know a lot of young people too a lot of younger people and um, we just got to continue you know praying for for those who are, are sick from covid and those who are um who have lost loved ones from from covid but a lot of what's just going on around the world we just got to keep our nation in prayer are you guys able to hear us good because we're driving yeah, let me know. Let's see here. What you say? Look, I can't read what people are saying. If uh, I read, Pastor, Pastor, do you drive the whole way? Yeah. He does. He likes driving, guys. That's the one thing about David. He loves to drive. They want to know if you drive. Oh, yeah. I don't mind driving. As long as I sleep at night, good. Then you can be a good truck. Because you drive a lot. Yeah, I was saying instead of Cholo Trucker, be a Cholo Christian or <laughs> Uh, Johnny says he's dry, he's working in San Diego right now. Oh snap! And Teresita, she says you guys get to see the sunset right now. Woohoo! Oh yeah. Woohoo! Guys, yeah, see Johnny Alcala on there. He was. We were bunkies at the last facility I was at before I released for two years, and um, I consider him to be one of my best friends. Uh, and um, we were there together. We did that time together the last two years. I got out before he did. I think he still did another two years after I got out. And he's still serving God now. Waiting for him to open a house of rest in Southern California. And I'm um, excited for that. I don't know what's up with Johnny, though. What are you waiting on, brother? They say they can hear good. Okay, cool. Yeah. We just wanted to jump on. I know we don't do lives often. And we're like, man, we're driving. Naomi's embarrassed to eat on the phone. So if you see her lean behind my seat, it's because she's chewing. She's leaning like she's leaning like a chola. Yeah. <laughs> but Karen, you ready? Guys, if you guys try one, two, what? three, eat her. Eat, 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 eat. <laughs> Have you guys tried these healthy cookies? They're pretty good. I, I know cookies are not good, but if you're gonna eat a cookie anyways. These are pretty good. That's a good meal replacement. They're not too sweet. Not the and they're not and they're not um they're not just dessert guys, they're actually a meal replacement. Oh really? Oh really? Yeah. Like a Snickers? Yeah, they're, they're, well they're a meal replacement. <laughs> they're to kind of carry you through to your next meal. Guys, who saw service today? I don't know if you saw the altar call. Did you see a guy running back and forth with the flag? That was my dad that just turned 80. I said, somebody grab that flag. We're about to worship. And my dad ran for that flag. It wasn't even his flag. He just grabbed it and started running back and forth with it. You know what that reminded me of, guys? Do you remember when David talks? Hold on. Okay, do you guys remember the time when David says that he wasn't even saved and... ...in attendance? 800. About 800 people. And his brother was preaching that one time. Share that story, babe. I want you to share that story. What are people saying, though? Because I asked the question. Did anybody see it? Yes. Some people, they saw it. So, share. So, my dad, I was kind of, I was kind of, like, tired of my life as far as dealing drugs. Not tired of my life, but tired of the lifestyle I was living. And I was selling dope. I was gangbanging. And I was tired, you know, and I asked my parents to come pray for me but I wasn't yet ready to surrender my life. But I told them I would start going to church. And I actually tried, I, I quit the music industry. Um, I want, I was out looking for a job, which I had no job skills. All I knew how to do was rap and sell drugs, that's it. And I tried though, you know, and I was going to church, but after like the three times, I started going late, going late, going late. And sometimes I would miss on a Sunday. And um, one day I showed up and it was packed out, right? So. I was, um, I got there after the worship because they worshiped too long. It was a Pentecostal church. I'm like, man, they worship too long. I just want to hear the preaching. So I got there late. And after, at the altar call, my dad not knowing I was there, my brother was a youth pastor at the time and he did the altar call and he called my dad up. He goes, man, how many, how would you worship if it brought the salvation of your children? And he started telling the whole congregation, right? And he calls my dad up and he says, Dad, how would you worship? How would you dance uh, for the salvation of your son? And my dad started dancing crazy for me. 
for my salvation. Him not even knowing I was there. He made, he, to the world, he made a fool of himself. You know, and, and I tell people, it wasn't a sermon that broke through. It wasn't a Bible study that broke through. It wasn't even a prayer that broke through. It was a dance. And when I saw my dad dance, it did something to me. And this is what's crazy, right? Is I didn't know during that time there's a federal indictment on me. And um, that was the last time I was in the church because a week later, the FBI arrested me. And that's when I surrendered my life to the Lord. That was already my third time being arrested, my third time getting a felony. I was tired, but it was that dance that broke something in me. And man, guys, when I saw my dad, my dad grab that flag today, I had to look away because I was I was gonna break. It was gonna break my composure, and uh, I closed my eyes and I, I just cried. You know, because when I saw my dad do that, it did something to me. Yeah, it broke me because that's what it reminded me of. It reminded me of what of what the story when he shares that because it made me catch a glimpse of when he shares that. It it, it just made me think of of that moment of what you have shared in the past and I said is that what he looked like yes like that <laughs> and it just like it really just it touched my heart my dad just turned 80 you know yeah so but it was a it was a flag with with the lion and and those of you that are Christians know that the Bible says that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah you know, and um, and as you guys know, the lion is the king of the jungle. You know, so I love the fact that the Bible describes Jesus as the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the protector. You know, and it was just beautiful, guys. Somebody said, "What does the flag mean?" Yeah, somebody had um, actually his brother Eli's flag, and I think brother. No, that's sister uh, Diana had bought it. I know they bought it from Eli. No, she ordered it. Well, then why did Johnny tell me they bought it from Eli? No, that not that one. She oh, bought it one? for she. They bought it so that they can take it oh, out okay. with Eli. Okay, so Sister Diana and Johnny, that was their flag, but my dad just grabbed it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm gonna have to buy my dad one. Yeah, we have to buy him his own flag. Yes. Any other questions or? Uh, love your whole family and everything you guys stand for, Rocha family. That is a. Uh, the Calico E509. God bless you, brother. Unknown, uh, yes, the word walk nice to you. Um, flags and worship go hand in hand. Who's asking about the sun? I saw, I thought it was your dad. Praise the Lord, Sheila. She said, yeah. Somebody just said the sun's Did still Did you just down? pay into Larry? Did you just see us? <laughs> Juan, did you just see us or something? We're, we're passing Pixley. Pixley right now. So if you guys go on the map and look up Pixley, P-I-X-L-E-Y. It's a little town. And we're, I think it's like two or three exits and that's it. We're passing it right now. I have a question. Do you guys actually send out the just to remind the people about worship or is it sent out by a computer? Actually, you you actually send that that's, out. That's me texting. Yeah, he actually sends that out, guys. He, now, he does yeah, that. We, have, we do um, pay for a service that allows me to send one text individually. That's why it puts your name on there. But that's me texting those words. Um, usually, I'm sitting there in service. They're getting ready. And I get my phone and I, I text and um, and it puts everybody in everybody's name and it sends it out independently to everybody. Um, the reason we pay that service is because if we put it everybody's text, then it gets crazy because then everybody if one person answers, everybody gets the answer. But yeah, that's me texting. Hi Norma. It's kind of wonderful how you live, how y'all live. Um we live just like you live, sis, day by day, you know, with the Lord, every day. I don't know why I'm showing you guys You're that. going to stop to see Edwin, 
Actually, we normally always get to see him, but yeah. actually not Who has today. That? Who knows about Edwin? Her mom's waiting already for us. They're gonna have uh, dinner with us. Or else I would, man. Our brother Edwin. Nobody else, that's it. I got a question, I got new neighbors. I just like to mind my own, my own, not even introduce myself. That's always worked for me. But my sister and mom and dad always, are always too friendly. Any advice? I'm always the friendly one. I always introduce myself to everybody. I'm friendly like that. I like it. It's I'm nice. Not. David's not the, he doesn't really, but I am. I know my neighbors now because of Sharon, because she'll start conversations with them. I converse with everybody, guys. I'm not that type. I am. I talk to everybody. There's a sunset. There's a sunset, guys. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you so much, Sally. I appreciate that. Does Pastor David still iron and crease clothes? He doesn't crease, but he irons. <clears throat> I don't iron. You know what my iron is? My iron is the dryer. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I do iron on Sundays for service because, Just on Sundays, because yes. of my slacks and my dress shirt. So the creases got to be in the sleeve and the creases got to be in the pants. But just on Sunday, slacks, on yeah. my slacks. I'm not sitting there ironing my Ben Davis with all these. You don't have Ben Davis. That's what I said. Oh. With all these plain. Oh my God. That was 20 years ago. Going back to Bible trivia with a little one. Oh, nice. All right, brother. That's Adam. awesome. Now we're passing early mark. Uh, Mike Jones wants to know Do you believe in the pre mid and post tribulation rapture? Do I believe in the pre mid or, or well, post tribulation? You know what? I'm not trying to shy away from that question, but this is for reals, because I just believe in being ready. And it's not a cop-out answer, honestly, because a lot of times people try to figure things out that don't even matter. Because I can't change when he's coming, when he's not coming. All I can do is try to reach as many people for Jesus as possible. It doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. Say, bye, Brenda. Bye, Brenda. Is bye. when people say, you know, that, that the church is going to be taken before tribulation because there's Christians right now in tribulation. There's Christians now that have died. There's Chris, Christians now in prison for the gospel. So you can't say that bubble called United States of America don't realize what the rest of the world is going through. Yeah. You know, tribulation is happening. Sister back here is, is her family's from Romania. Do you guys know? The Romanian government in the past when those communists incarcerated Christians. I mean, we're talking back in the 40s and 50s, you know, so Christians have been persecuted. You know, but anyways, guys, we I just... Like, I like what um, Adam said. What Adam said. He says, pre-mid and post, we endure to the end. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. As long as we're ready. Yeah. So. That's right. You must be ready every day. Yeah, but I, I don't really, said. Yeah, I don't really like, um, to me that's besides the point. We just got to reach people no matter what. Thank you, what. Angelica. What happened? She just said, uh, praise everything goes well with the surgery. Oh, yeah. He's going to be good. Yeah. We're going to pray eyesight out of that eye in the name of Jesus. We're going to command that, that eye to see in the name of Jesus. He says, uh, Mike Jones says that's why he asked because people always have their opinions on the subject. Yeah, Mike. Um, yeah, no, I appreciate the question, brother. And I, I, I like stuff like that for conversation, like over coffee. But I, I would never sit there and try to preach stuff that I don't know. You know, the Pharisees did that. And they couldn't see them. But they sit and argue about 
cold? Yeah, I just realized that this is on cold. Are you guys? No, I'm fine. You guys are fine? I was wondering why it was cold in here. So, but yeah, I love these questions. Do you need some air, brother? There's no hills on here, brother. No, it's flat. We're in a valley. You better stop that. One or two. God is good, Angelica. How's Kitty doing, Angelica? Torta. How's Torta? A little Torta. With her little, little crooked tail. Yeah. They're giving you the proper double R introduction in the car. <laughs> Josh. Hey, Josh. How you doing, brother? Where's Josh at? Is, is, is it Chicago or Detroit? Where are you at, brother? I forget. Josh Eternal, where are you at? I'm right here. Where are you at? <laughs> uh, Google Critic. My husband's name is Ozzy and his heart is hardened. Can you please pray for him? Absolutely. It will definitely keep him in prayer. Physically. Where, where, <laughs> where you at physically right now? Yes. Where do you live, brother? Like what state? <laughs> She's so spoiled. Don't spoil her like that, Angelica. I never spoiled her. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Hi, Artie. Huh? Artie's on there? Yeah. Marine? Already Marine. How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Well, I can't see you, but you know what I mean. Amen. What? You know, uh, Google Critic, he says, thank you so much. Please pray for uh, his heart in our marriage. You know, God is a restorer of, of all marriages. You know, if, if you just stand still and allow him to to do what he needs to do in your marriage he can do all things trust me all things you just got to allow him to and and you you'd be amazed of the things that he can do you just got to be willing if you're willing then then he'll do what needs to be done just let him is there a question about babylon is there a question about babylon let me see these right okay mentally restricted okay this is the Ford uh, Ford Expedition. That's where we're in right now. Okay, where do you think Babylon the Great is? America or Israel? Um, that's a good question. I don't know the answer. Oh, Josh is in, grew up in Milwaukee, but he lives in Iowa now. Oh, okay. Good question about Babylon. Um, sometimes I think it is America. Sometimes it's that spirit of Rome, you know, because it was a Roman Empire at that time. And we know that John was talking about Rome at that time. Um, but I, I don't have all the answers, but I will say something interesting that maybe some people never thought of. Is when the Antichrist rises up, Israel, Israel right now, those that don't believe in Jesus, are waiting, still waiting for the Messiah. And the Bible says that, what kind of bug is this? So... The Bible says that Israel, when the Antichrist comes, he will confuse even, even the wisest, right? And they will think that that means it can't be an American, it can't be an Egyptian, it can't. Israel will never accept a Messiah, a false Messiah, unless it's a Jewish person. So sometimes, a lot of me leans toward that the Antichrist will some way, somehow be of Jewish descent or else Israel would never accept a non-Jewish Messiah. So sometimes I wonder about that. I don't know where Babylon is, but I find it interesting that they would never think a non-Jewish person as the Messiah. It would have to be somebody from Israel or of Israeli descent. Just a thought. Anybody else? 
anybody else? Nope. Okay. Nice uh, Sunday sermon today, Pastor David. Artie Marine. Oh yeah, Mike Jones, good point. I'm glad you brought that up. As I'm driving, I'm can't, I don't have all this top of my mind, but did you guys know that in Rome, the Vatican sits in the center of seven hills and Revelation speaks about the city of seven hills. We can't ignore that. That's something we gotta really think about, that where the Vatican sits is known as the city of seven hills. And that's exactly where the Antichrist rises out of. Can't forget that stuff. That's good. You you got that before you got that before I got it. Oh, I just saw it. Yeah, I know. It came up on your phone before oh. before. Where were we at? We're the grapevine. Not yet. Already? Oh, not yet. Never mind. We haven't hit Bakersfield yet. Bakersfield. We're about to hit McFarland. That movie. Ooh. Do you guys see McFarland where those kids run? Yes. Those kids that run. It's a really good movie. Um, it was a Kevin Costner. Yeah. Um, how many of you guys have seen McFarland? It's a very inspirational. Norma, yes. <laughs> it's in Babylon's in Ohio. <laughs> so this little town called McFarland is actually um, where those kids were runners at. So but how many of you have seen it? I've been in like 30 towns in Babylon. Oh yeah? Who, wait, who's sending love from Chicago? I didn't, it disappeared on me. Angelica, you guys want to renew your vows? That'd be awesome. Yes, do it. How long have they been married? Uh, I don't think we know, do we? Huh? Yeah. So I'm down to cook for it. <laughs> Daniel's down to cook for it. Angelica. That's why I have Sharon reading it. I don't want you to see a life crash. I actually um, bought this thing on my phone so I can actually, it's on my windshield. Man, that sun's going down now. Uh... Uh, should we be practicing the laws from the Torah? What do you think about this? Joseph is the Yeah, Jesus, Jesus put it perfectly well, right? Because Jesus says, all the law and the prophets come down to this, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your might, and likewise love your neighbor. He says all the law is into that. Because even if you look at the Ten Commandments, the first five commandments are how we relate to God. And the last five commandments are how we relate to people. So that's why the Bible says that we don't do away with the Old Testament. We don't do away with the law, but through Christ, because the Jewish people could never fulfill the law. And even, even um, um, Paul was like, why are you forcing these Christians that are non-Jewish to follow the law if you guys can't even fulfill them? That's why the Bible says that we fulfill Everything is fulfilled through Christ. That Christ fulfills it. Now it's up to us to live Christ's life now. You know, so Jesus is the new covenant, guys. And and I, I think sometimes people mis, misinterpret that as saying, then the law's done away with. No, but the law has been fulfilled, fulfilled by one, and his name is Jesus. You know, so um that's that's uh that's that's new identity teaching right there. Yeah. That's new identity, guys. Yeah. 
You guys are making me think, and I'm trying to drive, man. <laughs> Daniel, can you can you read them real fast? Yeah. Uh, I know Beacon of Light said something cookie. Let's renew ours, too. And everybody wants to renew their vows? You got to wait a little bit, guys. Get to your five years. <laughs> <laughs> After one year? No. You're going to no. wait a little bit longer. I know. We've only been married for two, not even a month. <laughs> Josh, it's they want to have a monthly renewal. They're going to they're gonna renew it after a month. What did Josh say? He said the dude in the backseat has that personal security look about him. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> He's a chef. Me or him? I'm kidding. Oh, she? Yeah, she's my bodyguard. What's up? <laughs> It's not me. <laughs> so I just want to eat. You can apply. Empty tomb. I thought you were leaving, brother. <laughs> what the Adam do? Is... Man, this camera holds up well, guys, because it's actually darker than what it looks on this camera. Yeah, it it's is. Okay. That's crazy. It's a lot darker out here. So that means on the East Coast, it's already nighttime, huh? Yeah, sure what is. What a trip. Man, I really appreciate you guys uh, accompanying us in this drive, because, I mean... <laughs> Anthony, he's I just want to eat. <laughs> Anthony, you're bad. I was trying to use him as my Moses example, and he shaves. Why are Jewish people special? That's a good question, Amber. You know, I mean, no no question is a dumb question. No, that is a good question. Um, let me put it in That's a, Amber. Let, Amber's asking Let it. me put it in a nutshell. Um, in the beginning with Adam and Eve, right, there was no Israel. There was no any nation. They were just... Adam and Eve and the people that grew from there but over time they grew into tribes and then they grew into nations and those nations started to follow after false gods and worship false gods right but here's the thing that God made a promise that he was gonna come he was gonna come through the bloodline of man but how could he how could he do that if all the nations if all the tribes were wicked and worshiped idols so God says I need to make myself a peculiar people that's why he talked to Abraham. Abraham, he told him, he says, I will make you a father of many nations. He goes, but you need to leave your father and your mother because they were they were idol worshipers. And he goes, out of you, I will bless all those that bless you and I will curse all those that curse you. So it's almost like the Hebrew people were created to be set apart, to be holy, because God needed to come to a holy nation. It's not that it's not that is it's not that Jewish people were special. It's that that's who he chose. He had to come out of somewhere. So he told Abraham, "Out of you will come a great nation." Right. So, so that is why God was so strict with the Old Testament and the Torah and the Ten Commandments because all other nations were wicked. Had to be born through through an idol worshiping nation. So that's why God gave him the laws. That God gave him all these things because he had to come through that bloodline, you know, and um, so a lot of people get it mistaken, you know, and they think like, oh, Israel is separate from all of us. Israel was just the people that God chose to be born through, you know, and, and a lot of times people say, well, it says here that that Israel will bless the world. Um, no, no, I'm sorry. It's not Israel that's going to bless the world. It's Jesus because Jesus came through Israel that became a blessing to the whole world. You know, so it's it was literally set apart for a purpose. And that purpose was for Jesus to be born through a nation that worshiped God and not idols. Bible indicates that yeah nothing in the Bible says about a new Passover and then 
Josh asked another question. He said, Pastor, is your preaching going to get heavier if World War Three breaks out? Um, I just, I just, brother, I just, I just preach whatever God tells me. You know, um, I'm, I know that probably sounds cliche because a lot of people say this. I truly just preach what I hear whispered into my ear. I'm not saying it's a cliche. I am humbled by it. I'm humbled by what God does, you know, but I try my best to what he is speaking to me for me to preach it without it being ruined, you know, and, and that's all I can do is, so really, the question is, is the Holy Spirit going to get deeper if World War Three hits, and I'm pretty but, sure he will. But I do know, but I do know something um, that I know that there, there has been a shift that something is is happening and and I and I pray that it's happening everywhere and not just here at House of Rest that I pray that that there is a shift that is yeah. taking place that they're you know and I pray that it's beginning to happen everywhere because I know that within House of Rest and within RBT and within um, within our body within within us there has been a big shift and something is happening yeah we see it we feel it you know as, as far as armageddon i did see somebody say something about armageddon i will say this is the bible says that there will be wars and rumors of wars but what is interesting is this is china right now is becoming a superpower and china is communist they do not believe in christians they crush christians in china that's why there's underground churches Another second country is Iran. Iran has said that they want to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. And Iran and China are allies. Now the third one is Russia. And Russia is communist. Also, they crush Christianity and persecute Christians. And they are allies to Iran. These are three superpower nations that hate Christianity. And one of them wants to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. If there's ever going to be an Armageddon, this is the closest so far that we have seen, you know, and, and we don't know, we don't know the future, this might blow over, this might not, but it's interesting that these three nations hate Christianity and try to crush it. It's true. Yeah. Anybody else? That's, that's good. Yes, Iran does have a lot of Christians, but the government wants, the government, not the people of Iran, but the government wants to destroy Israel. Uh, they said, somebody's like, Yepa. Yepa, they said, yeah. Yepa. The Ukraine, this whole thing with Ukraine, I don't know the politics of it, but I do know that we have, as Grace International, we have a Pastor Slavic. We have seen him many times at our, at our um, leadership conferences every year. He oversees 56 Grace International churches in Yugoslavia. I mean, a Yugoslavia in uh, Ukraine. 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 And right now, he wrote to the pastors of Grace International that many people, he's bringing in many people in the 56 churches, and people are hiding in the basements of the churches, and they're in prayer right now. Um, so, Pastor, I'm sorry. Josh Eternal, you're absolutely the best pastor on YouTube. So glad I found you, Pastor. Thank um, you, Joshua. Thank you, brother. I, I, I receive that. Humbly, <laughs> humbly receive that. Sheila, Sister Sharon, I feel that shift too. Yeah. Mike Jones, um, Iran has a lot of Christians. Uh, brother Ray, 509, Angels of Resurrection, God has... Um, has at the ready hallelujah uh, mike Palacios, rumors of war that's right pastors the end is near coming of the lord is here didn't uh yerba buena didn't china burn all the churches yes um, i didn't know that um if you guys want to know more about china read watchman me he was he died he was a pastor in china before he became communist and what happened was when China became communist, so the world wouldn't know that they were persecuting Christians, they basically hijacked the Christian church and they forced every clergyman to register with the communist government or else they couldn't preach anymore. But here's the thing, right? There's a give and take. They said, okay, you can preach, 
but you can't preach this and this and this. They controlled what the preachers preach. Watchman Nee says, I am not going to submit to the things that the communists are telling me not to preach. I'm going to preach the full gospel. And because of that, Watchman Nee died in prison, serving 19 years. And he has amazing, amazing books, so much wisdom, and they've been translated into English. You know, and here's the thing about Watchman Nee. You know how it started? It started with protests against Christians. It started with protests against the Christian universities. And what ended up happening is many, possibly thousands, I don't know how many, Christian pastors that refused to bow down to the communist government and refused to be muzzled started to preach the full gospel. And for that, they paid the price with their lives. That's Watchman Nee. get watch many books on Amazon yeah, for yeah. like three dollars each yeah Adam that's right you can get him Alex Alex Alves is on here Alex Alves Alex we're going um, my, my son's having a surgery tomorrow his first they're doing two surgeries at once he's having two procedures guys as you guys remember um, at least four months ago was it about four months ago Four. Yeah, about, yeah four about four months ago, he had two seizures where one of them, one of the seizures, he ended up uh, ripping into a trash can that ripped um, his, pretty much his eye globe in half. And when he ripped his eye globe in half, they, it tore his eye globe and they had to try to stitch it together to try to save his eye. And he has been without eyesight on that eye. That's right. They, yeah, his right eye. So what they did is they ended up putting a temporary, um, a temporary lens in the meantime. But right now he's been without a temporary lens in the meantime. And um, tomorrow is his first surgery, two surgeries at once. They're going to remove the globe of his eye, clean it out. And since it's healed a little bit, he still has not been able to see. Um, and what they're going to do is put a lens transplant now and now that they're putting that lens transplant That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's almost like when you have a kidney transplant when somebody donates their organs guys um, You know somebody donated a lens and um, my my son is getting a lens for his eye yeah. and um, he's gonna get that and uh we're going to pray that he is going to be able to see. And um, this is a big thing, guys, because um, we're going to pray that he is going to be able to see from that eye. So I need you guys to all be praying because I know God is going to God is going to do a miracle tomorrow because he has not been able to see from that eye for many months now. Yeah, we thank God for real doctors that care, real surgeons that care, real nurses that care. Here's the thing, here's the thing, right, is whatever surgeons do, all of that wisdom, all of that talent is only given by God. Amen. God is a giver of gifts and talents. Yeah. So even though it's a surgeon, I still thank God because, man, the, the, the incredible things that the medical um, field does, you know, it, it's just incredible the things they do, and I just thank God for those things. Yeah. Because, you know, guys, he had just gotten married literally two months before that. He had just gotten married. As you guys remember, I went to his wedding and, you know, my, my son's an engineer and he needs his eyes so that he can continue his career. He had just gotten married and just bought a house and um, just right at the pivotal point of his life, you know, and, and then this happens. So we're just going to pray that... Um, it's you know the lord's hand is that um is in that surgery room amen what did somebody say about books or something um It's like chunky, huh? Yeah. China, they pray Christianity in secrecy. I found they were persecuted. Okay, I'm really out now. Okay, Adam's really leaving now. Okay, Adam.
brother A, praying for the families, everyone in Russia and our Ukraine brothers yeah. and sisters, protection in Jesus' name. So Russian jets shot down. That made me sad because those are lives too. Yeah, amen. You That's know, the right. Russian lives too. Man, these soldiers, yeah. they're just following orders. What, what can they do? Tell the president no? They're eating beef jerky, brother. What happened? Who's <laughs> yes, who's, what are you guys eating? Flank steak. Flank steak. <laughs> Yeah. Chunky jerky, that's what I call it. Josh Eternal, Pastor, I would love to see you and JC from the Wrong to Strong channel collab for an interview. Your paths are so similar as 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 were your path to Jesus. Amen. I gotta check out the channel. Um That is good. We declare victory. Okay. Uh somebody said something about books. Okay, Pastor Rocha, I'm glad you chose to become a pastor. Yeah, yeah you I've, have. I've always been a reader. Um, reading expands your vocabulary. It expands, you know, to let you see things differently from different perspectives, and, and it builds you. To me, it it builds your just your your um, man. What's the word? I don't know what the word is. I'm trying to say, but reading reading is always going to help, you know, and it shapes our. Oh, there it is. Hey, thanks, brother Alex. Yeah, so, um, reading just helps, guys. You're never going to lose by reading, and, you know, it helps, and I've always been a reader. I think that's really important for us to be educated um, and learn about different things, you know. I'm going to be getting off in a couple minutes, guys. Um, I appreciate hanging out with you guys, will we? Jeremiah, he says, oh, it's small talk time. Oh. Do you really want him to watch, but smelling like, um, like, uh, what? <laughs> what that? You wanted me to ask it? I have had people come in like, like, uh, uh, uh like meth? Smelling like whiskey, smelling like meth. We had somebody in our bathroom smoking meth. It is what it is, but here's the thing, right? Is that they come, yeah, and we share the gospel with them. You know, yeah. I don't care what they smell like; they're gonna come and hear the message. And the Bible says that no, that His word does not come back void. You know, the Lord led them there for one reason or another. So, uh, but yeah, guys, we're gonna wind this thing down. I appreciate you guys keeping us company for a little bit on some of this trip. It is getting dark in here now. Josh, I love audiobooks. I'm I'm more of an audiobook person. I'm both. I love audio. He, he does both, but a lot of the times when we do audiobooks, I do audiobooks with him. We do like audiobooks together. Right well, now, right well, now we're listening to God's Generals. Yeah, God's Generals. We're listening to together. That's a, it's really really good. The Identity in Christ, Who Are You, the book I just wrote, all I'm doing is waiting for it to get approved, and that probably within these next couple of days, possibly even tomorrow, it'll get approved. Um, it's already submitted to them. It's just a matter of them to put it up on the Audible store. Uh, Sister Lisa, his name is Christopher. Christopher and his wife, his name is Talene. I really appreciate you guys praying for him, guys. So, with that being said, it's already an hour, guys. God bless you. Thank you so much. We'll probably do this a couple more times because we're going to uh, be out here for a couple days. And we're still going to do our devotional, guys. It's yeah. not going to stop us from doing our devotional. We missed a lot last week. A lot of it, we were so busy. We, we I had to, I had to uh, bury Anthony De La Garza and... It was just a build up to that that took a, a lot of our week and um, and then the one time we did do a devotional there was no sound recorded yeah but we apologize for that so we're not going to skip this week even if we're out driving i brought the tripod so we'll be able to still do the devotionals yeah it was beautiful i would i am going to share um his memorial card with you guys um here on our devotional um and I am going to share um, like a, like a little pictures of 
of his little table that they set up. We were really, really humbled and blessed um, with the beautiful gesture of them putting out the little Kool-Aid man that we had sent to him on the table with the picture of David and I and him on the table. I think that was so beautiful that they put that out for us. Um, it was just really, really special. He was such a special guy, you know, and we miss him, guys. We really miss He would have been on there right now. He he would be on here right now and he would be he would actually probably be giving a he would a super cat. A super, <laughs> he yeah. would be giving a super cat right now. For no reason. For no reason. <laughs> Just because. Yeah. So alright guys, we're gonna call it quits for right now. And um, we'll be back on. Appreciate you guys so much. Your questions really, really do appreciate them. It's a lot of fun. You guys make it fun. You guys make my brain start working <laughs> with these questions. And hopefully I, I answered some of them. Hopefully to, you know, just to answer it to the best of my ability, guys. You know, um, but God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Love you guys. Did you just say bye? Thank you, thank you. God bless you guys. See you later. Bye guys.